Welcome to episode 10 of the Mom Anxiety Club podcast. On today's episode, you will hear my conversation with Megan Bell, a registered dietitian and mom to an 18 month old. She shares her experiences in early postpartum and shares some tips for nutrition during the postpartum period and beyond. Here we go. Welcome to the Momsiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. As a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice, I know the importance of keeping calm in difficult situations. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety, constantly questioning if I was doing the right thing or how I was messing my kids up now. One day, everything clicked and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Anxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of this anxiety together. Hello, my name is Tori Levine, and I want to welcome you to the Anxiety Club podcast. Today, I am thrilled to share a conversation I had with my friend and fellow mom, Megan Bell. We met through a local hospital's mom's networking group after I had my second son and she had her first, and they are both about a month, I think, apart. Megan is a registered dietitian with a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics and a master's degree in health promotion. During graduate school, the focus of her research and independent studies was on maternal and infant nutrition, and she worked extensively with the WIC program. Megan is a Central PA native and is married to her high school sweetheart and has an 18-month-old son, Christopher. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping notes for you. And don't worry, this is not to make your life harder, it's to make your life easier because I know we always have those never-ending to-do lists. If I reference anything in the episode, it will be noted in the show notes. So if you're driving, rocking the baby to sleep, making dinner, or any of the other million things that you have to do, don't worry about writing it down. You could just check in the show notes later for a link. I also just want to thank you for listening. Yes, you. If you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button in your podcast app. That way you don't have to worry about remembering when the next episode comes out. It'll just show up on your phone. And additionally, there is a link in the show notes to get on the Anxiety Club email list. This way, you also will get notifications in your email when new episodes come out, and you will also have access to some pretty great freebies that encompass movement and mindset for moms. You can get that link in the show notes, or you can go to join.momxietyclub.com. All right, that's enough of that. So let's get to my chat with Megan, all about her experiences as, an, as a new mom, as well as some great tips on nutrition for mom. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Megan Bell to the Anxiety Club podcast. Hi, Megan. Hi, Tori. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited you're here for multiple reasons. Number one, to share about your story and then also to get to pick your brain about nutrition things, which I know is a big passion of yours, obviously, since you're a nutritionist. So so would you like to just introduce yourself to the listeners and, you know, you can give us a little brief background on your nutrition, but then also just you as a mom in person. You're not always like, I feel this is mom focused. So, but I know there are people behind the moms too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Like Tori said, um, my background is in nutrition. I am a registered dietitian. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics from Westchester University Um, I did my RD training at IUP um, out in Western Pennsylvania, and then I wrapped up my education with a master's degree from the University of Delaware with a focus on health promotion. While I was at the University of Delaware, a lot of my research and um, assistantship training was spent 
actually in um, breastfeeding and infant and toddler nutrition. I work a lot with the WIC program, the Women, Infants, Children program. Um, so, you know, even before I had kiddos, um, nutrition surrounding postpartum perinatal things were um, really important to me. Um, so I practiced for about 10 years um, in nutrition. And then I had my kiddo about 18 months ago. Um, and ever since then, I've just been kind of working, you know, here and there in the fields, keeping my feet wet. But um, at this point in time, mostly like Tori said, being a stay at home mom. Will you share with us a little about your story through pregnancy, postpartum, and if anxiety played a role in that time period? I mean, you're still postpartum. <laughs> Does postpartum really ever end? No, it's it's <laughs> always. Once you're postpartum, you always are. Um, so, you know, kind of reflecting back on my life, my short life so far, um, I guess I'm always kind of been an anxious person. You know, I've always been the worrier of the group. Um, you know, I always kind of, in friend groups, I would, get the, you know, the name mom a lot because I was always trying to take care of everybody and, you know, worrying about getting places on time and uh, always going to like that kind of worst case scenario in my head a lot. Um, but it never really had a name or, um, you know, was really never defined as anxiety mm -hmm. um, as I was growing up or, you know, even college, young adulthood. Um, I would say throughout pregnancy, I, I had a very normal pregnancy. I liked being pregnant. Um, it was really like starting at that birth process and on that I noticed, um, Hey, maybe this isn't normal. I did have, um, a pretty rough birth. I sustained a fourth degree tear, um, which is something, um, that I think that we also need to talk about a lot more, mm -hmm. um, you know, birth injuries and traumatic birth. Um, because I think a lot of times, you know, really the focus that everybody has is on the healthy baby and what baby um, is doing and, you know, 10 fingers, 10 toes. And while that is hugely important, um, I think as a society, we're missing this big part of maternal health also. Right. Mom so, still exists even once she's given birth to baby. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, I kind of had this um, traumatic birth experience and then I was dealing with it all by myself, really, um, because, you know, nobody really wants to talk about fourth degree tears. You know, they're, they're pretty taboo, um, you know, kind of tuck that away, hide it. Um, um, yeah. So I think as I was dealing with healing from that and trying to realize what was normal and what wasn't, um, a lot of these feelings of anxiety and, and stress really started to bubble out. Um, I noticed feeling maybe a little more quick to go off the handle and like rage filled um, and crying all the time and just like these terrible thoughts like I would never I wouldn't want my husband to leave the house because I would think that you know every time he would leave the house that he was going to get into a car accident and die and I was going to be left with this screaming child all by myself forever um so um that I have had those exact same things and it then turned into when my child was older, like, well, they can't go away without me because what if, you know, something happens? So yes, I know that is a big thought for lots of moms. And thank you for sharing that because that is something that we don't talk about enough as well. So it, it wasn't until, um, you know, I really started to process this and also talked with moms in our local moms group. Um, like you, Tori, and Katie, who you interviewed last week, mm -hmm. um, that I started to realize, like, okay, my thoughts aren't normal, but they're not wrong either, um, and that there is help out there. So mm -hmm. I, um, I advocated for myself. I saw my um, 
OB provider and um, they were able to connect me with a psychiatrist in the area. Um, and I was able to start um, some medication that really has helped kind of regulate how I'm feeling um, and get me back to, you know, a feeling like myself again. Mm -hmm. Right. You feel like you're able to handle it. Like there's definitely a change. And do you ever have that experience where you kind of take note of where you are and go, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that this is where I was because that's just so not me. Or did you, was it, sometimes people only realize that if it's very severe or things like that. So, right. Um, I think that the moment that I like really clicked in my head that like, Hey, this, like, you're probably feeling some anxiety or like, this isn't normal is I was changing my son's diaper and, you know, kids hate their diaper being changed. Like, um, so he's screaming and he's rolling and like, I, I just lost it. Um, I was just so mad at him, um, that it just didn't seem like a regulated, like my brain chemistry was having an appropriate response to a small child being upset with me. Like, Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was scary for me. Um, and that's when I knew, and it was, it was one of those moments. It was like, okay, this is no longer affecting just me. It's going to start affecting my child. Um, and that I really, I really need to take care of it. Um, so in a way, you know, looking back, I wish that I had sought help for my anxiety earlier in life, um, because I think that um, some difficult situations potentially would have been managed better. Um, But, you know, thankful that I had that wake up call when I did. So what came to mind when you were talking about that a little bit? is I, the interview with Dr. Silver, the, one of the local psychiatrists, uh, is out today. And one of the things she talked about is the myth that there's just the baby blues or the postpartum blues. Um, and that she feels, or my understanding is that she feels that that is negatively impacting maternal health because it's normalized that aspect of it. And it's just like, oh, everybody goes through that. It's okay. And so she focuses on this adjustment period that you're adjusting to having this new person in your life. You adjust to going back to school. You adjust to a new job. You adjust to different things. So you give yourself that like two week period. But if then you are having difficulty with that adjustment, then that's where we get into it's anxiety, it's depression, it's Mm -hmm. different things. So I think that is a really good, while we want to, it's kind of confusing, while we want to normalize and bring awareness to mental health, we don't want to normalize that the baby blues (laughs) are just like everybody does that and that's how it is. There's nothing to, to do to get over them. Right. So thank you for sharing your story. And I, I know that that will definitely help a lot of new moms when they listen, because the response that I've gotten just from the storytelling episodes have been amazing. And just this, that's the goal of this is to help other moms to know that they're not alone. So thank you. Uh, now let's dive into some nutrition stuff. (laughs) Um, so we're just primarily going to focus today on mom and ways that nutrition can affect, cannot affect, you know, you tell us about our mental health, our anxiety, our well-being, those types of things. And I love that you have that background with breastfeeding moms and WIC, because then you can give us the... You t- how do we say it? Lacto galacto galactagogues. Thank you. I used to be able to say it, and now it's <laughs> out of my terminology. It is a mouthful. Yes. Sure. So, as a new mom, are there foods that we should eat more of, less of? Uh, I know 
probably you'll say well-balanced diet, but give us some details. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, it's one of those things that, you know, even with, you know, weight loss diets, this, that, and the other thing, everybody's looking for that magic bullet. Um, but I, so I always feel like a buzzkill when I'm like, yep, it's just time to eat in moderation and a well-balanced diet. Um, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, during childbirth, um, your body has gone through a lot. Um, you know, it, you've either had a C-section and you need time to surgically or to heal from that surgery or um, even a vaginal birth. You know, you're, that's not something that happens to our bodies every day. And it, it does take time to heal. So nutrition definitely plays a role in our healing process, how fast that um, we're able to bounce back. Um, it's not the only thing. Um, but it can definitely play into it. Um, so really what I like to tell people to focus on is just that healthy diet that includes um, protein and that can be animal protein or it can be plant-based protein wherever your um, preferences or dietary beliefs fall. Um, iron is really important because Again, regardless of your delivery um, style, I don't know, call it style or um, route of exit, <laughs> you have lost <laughs> a lot of blood. Um, and your baby is also all of um, the iron that they're born with, they have taken from um, what you've consumed and it's gone through the placenta. Um, so your iron stores likely are going to be low um, post immediately postpartum. Um, another big factor is uh, fiber. We really want to focus on fiber. We all know that first poop and be a doozy. Um, <laughs> so focusing on fiber and um, making sure that you have enough water in your diet can also also really help those um, factors. Um, so you can't forget about the water because <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you eat too much acid. fiber and you don't drink enough water, then you're really sunk and you're more uncomfortable than you were when you right. started. Right. And then also, I don't know if this is true, but I found with water, because breast milk is what I forget the percentage, the like 90 something percent. Yeah, 90. Yeah, it's yeah. very high in water. So you're dehydrating yourself, breastfeeding essentially. So you have right. to continue to make the milk, to make more milk, and then also just to get yourself back at that balanced hydration point. For sure, yes. Um, yeah, staying hydrated um, is really important. And a lot of moms, um, I know, you know, this is the time to, to get out all your cute gear, get that cute water bottle out, anything that's going to cue you to take a drink. Um, and whether you're breastfeeding or formula feeding, when that baby takes a drink at the breast or at the bottle, that's the time that you also should be picking up your bottle to take a drink. Um, it's really important. Some easy ways to gauge your hydration other than tracking your ounces, because, you know, as new moms, we're tracking so many things. How many ounces the baby's eating how many <laughs> today? How many, how much that can get exhausting. Look at your urine. Um, if it is like clear, pale yellow in the toilet, that's like likely an indication that you're hydrated enough as it starts to get darker, maybe a little bit more foul smelling. That's the time to really think about, okay, I need to up my fluid consumption. So my urine shouldn't smell like the coffee that I just drank. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, asparagus, coffee, all these things can give our urine different scents. Um, but it, if it has that really strong concentration of um, urine, that's when you really, um, that's an indication of maybe it's time to... To right. start drinking a little bit more. I know I have been very bad lately with my water hydration. And as I was writing different notes for what I'm going to put in here, I put tips to measure and then I started writing coffee. <laughs> measure coffee, hydration. There we go. <laughs> so you mentioned 
protein as the first thing to yeah. focus on. And that just made me think of your experience with a fourth degree tear as well yeah. as healing from C-section. I know protein plays a big role in healing. Um, only just because you reminded me before I would have forgotten. So can you tell listeners a little bit more about that and why, you know, why it's important or if they are trying to heal, should they eat more protein than they normally would or anything like that? Um, so really what it comes down to is, um, protein is so important because, you know, our body um, needs the amino acids that are contained in protein to help, um, repair that connective tissue. Um, so I wouldn't say that, um, you necessarily need to like, you know, start going and, you know, pounding protein drinks and all of this to, um, help your body heal from a C-section if you are of a normal, healthy, um, you know, state leading into birth and after birth. Um, a good thing to keep in mind is every time that you're eating, so postpartum, it's really easy just to grab those like quick carb filled snacks, mm -hmm. um, which definitely have their role. But I encourage moms to think more about every time you're eating a carb, you want to pair it with a protein. So if you are going to grab an apple for a snack, let's just say um, quick, easy fiber filled snack, um, pair it with a spoonful of peanut butter or, um, you know, an ounce or two of cheddar cheese, something just really simple. Um, you're not reinventing the wheel, but, um, you're just adding those building blocks together to help your body just get back to a normal healed. Well, whatever your new normal, I think, right, right. I hate that word, but, um, or that phrase, um, but to get to that healing phase. Because that's, a great tip to pair it with whatever you're grabbing. Um, and then also that moderation with it. So just, a, just a spoonful of peanut butter, not a jar. <laughs> Cause I know that's what I would do, but <laughs> all right. So in the protein is important, but are there foods that will assist with moms who are, if they're having difficulty creating enough milk or if they want to focus on that. Not all moms want to. Some are just going to bottle feed, which is fed is the best. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, no, yeah, that's definitely the, the motto to think about, um, you know, just to feed that baby. Um, as far as, uh, the galactagogues, that buzzword that we keep hearing, um, you know, the research is still out on a lot of um, these foods that are uh, claimed to increase your breast milk. So, uh, you know, a big one is oatmeal or brewer's yeast or beer. I've heard a lot because <laughs> it has the brewer's yeast in it. Um, and, you know, those certainly, I, I don't um, have anything, you know, against adding oatmeal into your diet. That's great um, because, again, it's adding that fiber that... Um, I keep talking about um, that I find important, but you know, the research is really showing that there's not a whole lot of evidence at this point as to whether that really increases breast milk. And that can be a, you know, twofold. It could be because it actually really doesn't, or it could be because research is really sparse with mm -hmm. women in that pregnant perinatal postpartum area because your know, researchers are scared. A lot of institutional review boards don't, you know, kind of go near women because it's such a, a precious time and we don't want to you know, harm children in any way.